जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज माई फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन एंड द टॉपिक दैट आई एम कवरिंग इज बेसिकली फ्रॉम के सी सिक्स जीरो सिक्स टू विच इज सब्जेक्ट ऑफ ए गे टी यू थर्ड ईयर सो द फर्स्ट टॉपिक दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कवर इन दिस वीडियो इज द इंट्रोडक्शन टू सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन दीज आर द टॉपिक्स दैट आई एल बी कवरिंग टूडे द हिस्ट्री ऑफ सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन overview of satellite communication type of satellites types of orbit satellite services advantages and disadvantages of satellite communication satellite life phases debris introduction to geosynchronous and geostationary satellites these are the major topics that i'll be covering today now moving ahead with this topic the first question that comes into our mind is what is satellite so as a layman we can say that a satellite is a moon planet or a machine that orbits a planet or a star it can be moon it can be planet or it can be a machine which orbits a planet or star for example if we take the example of earth so earth is a satellite because it orbits sun right likewise moon is also a satellite because it orbits earth right so usually the word satellite refers to a machine that is launched into space and moves around the earth or another body in space so based on this we have uh, artificial satellites and natural satellites so if we look here we can see that earth and moon these are the natural satellites because they are orbiting sun and earth similarly if we are launching a satellite uh, into an orbit and which will be orbiting earth that is known as artificial satellites fine so earth and moon are examples of natural satellites thousands of artificial and man made satellites are orbiting earth some take pictures of the planet that helps the meteorologist and predict weather and uh, track hurricanes some take pictures of other planets the sun black holes dark matter so these are the few advantages or few applications of satellite so here we can see few images which are very interesting this is the jason 2 satellite orbit earth it carries tools and sensors which helps the scientists to study about the oceans so this is a artificial satellite that we have launched and the name of the satellite is jason 2 this picture is the credit goes to nasa i have taken this picture from nasa then second here we can see that nasa has more than a dozen of satellites dozen of earth and satellites in the orbit which helps nasa study about the ocean land atmosphere etc so here you can see this is our earth and these are the artificial satellites which are providing us so many applications okay so these are the artificial satellites so coming back to the history okay uh, what was the history so the first satellite that was launched by ussr was the sputnik 1 and it was launched in 1957 it was successfully launched in 1957 so here we can see it's a kind of you can say uh, a ball like structure you can see here very simple satellite which was launched um, by ussr in 1957 and the name of the satellite was sputnik 1 now if we uh, if we go with uh, the introduction of satellite communications first we need to see uh, how your satellite or uh, i mean what kind of propagations are behind under this so there are two type of propagations which are used first is ground wave propagation and sky wave propagation ground wave propagation is suitable for frequencies up to 30 megahertz and this method of communication makes use of the tropospheric conditions of the earth so generally we use this ground wave propagation for the terrestrial communication 
the basic between the basic difference between terrestrial communication and uh, the sky wave or the space communication is that terrestrial communication is limited to land or more than um, like oceans but with the help of satellite communications you can connect different countries different time zones you can connect different um, you know countries which are far apart from each other so for that we have second type of uh, propagation which is the sky wave propagation uh, which is suitable for bandwidth and broadly between 30 to 40 megahertz and which makes use uh, the ionospheric properties of the earth the maximum hop or the station distance is limited to 1500 kilometers only in both ground wave and the sky wave propagation satellite helps us to provide the communication for long distance which is the main you can say the basic of uh, of satellite communication you see uh, uh, if we go with the history of satellite communication then the, the very first idea which was proposed about the satellite communication was uh, a paper uh, which was of the scientist Clark so that scientist Clark uh, has written a paper in somewhere around 1945 about the satellite he has given a basic uh, introduction of satellite communication in his paper now moving ahead with the topic of satellite communication how the communication takes place so students you should know the basic terms and this is a major thing that students used to forget i mean uh, about the uplink and downlink so be clear in this what is uplink what is downlink then only you will be able to understand the next concepts of the coming concepts of the satellite communication so what is the what is the advantage of satellite communication the advantage is that you can have the communication or the end users can be uh, can have be you know distance apart i mean one user can in one country can be in one country other user can be present in other country which are uh, you know uh, very far from each other so we have here we can see that we have this one this is the earth station that you can say earth stations okay and this is also earth station this is earth station 1 and this is earth station 2 so your user can be located anywhere here let's say if we are talking about normal mobile communication so your user can be here or you can have your communication with the help of uh, uh, LAN or laptop so any sort of mobile communication telephonic communication or you can say uh, communication through your laptop the end user can be sitting here right so this end user will be connecting with this earth station or you can say the ground station with the help of the terrestrial links so here the communication will take place with the help of terrestrial links now this earth station or the ground station will be transmitting all those signals to the satellite in which it is connected here we have the satellite which is in the space right so here you can see the signal is going from earth station to satellites that is why it is known as uplink right now your satellite will be receiving this uplink signal and then will be uh, going or, or will be providing the signal back to the earth station which is known as the downlink right so here the end user 2 will be receiving the signal so satellite uplink will be the transmitting of signal to the satellite now if your satellite will be transmitting the signal to the user or you can say the earth station is receiving the signal then it is known as the downlink here we have the destination right so in this picture you can see this is the source earth station uplink and then downlink this is the receiver okay now we have to see what all uh, the frequency bands which are allocated in the satellite communication okay so as we know that we can have terrestrial communication or we can have satellite communication so in terrestrial communication you can talk about the normal mobile communication that we can have or the communication through telephones or the PSTN so there is a separate bands allocated for each sort of communication each and every type of communication will be having a different 
set of frequency bands which are dedicatedly used by this particular application. So, if we talk about satellite communications, there are few bands which are uh, dedicatedly allocated for satellite communication and the majorly used bands are the C band, KU band and KA band, right. In C band, okay, we have uplink, fre uplink frequency and downlink frequency. So, here you can see the uplink frequency is ranging from approximately 6 gigahertz okay and downlink frequency is approximately 4 gigahertz so that is why this c brand can also be written as 6 by 4 gigahertz okay where 6 gigahertz will be for down uplink and 4 gigahertz will be for downlink then you can say here in ku band this is approximately 12 gigahertz and this is approximately 14 gigahertz so, 14 by 12 gigahertz is for KU band, right? Then we have the third band which is allocated to us for satellite communication. Here you can see in downing we can have 17.7 uh, to 21 gigahertz and here we have 27 to 30 gigahertz. So, in approximately we can say it is 30 by 20 gigahertz, right? So, these are the three bands which are allocated for satellite communication okay now why we are providing three different bands why because we can have numerous of applications of satellite communication right so based on the application of satellite communication we have divided these bands like generally this uh, c band is most frequently used ka and ku bands are re uh, reserved for uh, satellite communication but are subjected to rain attenuation some satellites carry transponders for both C band and KU band. We will study the application of satellite based on different bands later on. So, here uh, we can see uh, now we will be discussing about the satellite types, okay, what all are the types of satellites. So, uh, here you can see, I mean satellite can be can be uh, defined or can be differentiated based on dif uh, a num number of uh, uh, ways like if we talk about first about uh, the type of satellites we are dividing based on artificial or natural satellite. So, there are so many uh, natural and artificial satellites are there. This is moon okay which is um, a natural satellite earth and there are so many uh, moons are there for other planets also. So, all those planets are also satellite and the satellite which is revolving around uh, those planets are also satellites. So, the, the, these are the type of natural satellites. Now, if we launch some equipment in the space that is your artificial satellites. So, these are the examples of artificial satellites, correct? So, artificial satellites are basically that we have uh, intentionally launched into space just because of our requirements or the needs or the applications. Natural satellites are the normal satellites which are formed because of uh, so many natural factors. Okay, mm, now uh, we can differentiate type of satellite based on their mass. Okay, like in nowadays, I mean uh, your satellite can be weighed around 1 kg which are known as CubeSat. CubeSat satellites are very small satellites and these satellites are launched in a big number. I mean 1000, 2000 satellites are launched. So, uh, depending upon the weight of satellite or the mass of satellites, we have different different type of satellites. Okay, uh, here you can see uh, that uh, uh, type of satellite orbit, okay, different different type of orbits you can see here. This is equatorial orbit, this is polar orbit, this is inclined orbit, okay. By shape here you can see that this is circular orbit, okay, and this is elliptical orbit. <coughs> By altitude you can see here low earth orbit, medium earth orbit and geostationary earth orbit. So, these are the type of um, orbits here you can see. If we talk about in detail about type of orbit and, and by inclination we can see equatorial orbit. So, the orbit which is parallel to the equator of earth is known as equatorial orbit. So, the satellites which are launched into this um, equatorial orbit are known as the equatorial set orbit satellites. So, generally geostationary satellites are the equatorial orbit satellites. 
then we have uh, polar orbits the set the satellites which will be revolving around the uh, poles like north pole and south pole uh, okay so this is north pole this is south pole okay so the polar orbit are like this okay this is like horizontal polar orbit are like vertical okay so we have some polar orbit satellites which will be dedicatedly covering the uh, region near to the polar then we have inclined orbit satellites inclined means uh, this is uh, equatorial orbit if we incline this orbit equatorial orbit will be like this okay inclined orbit will be like this if there is some inclination between uh, between the equator so here you can see if i draw if i draw um, equator so let's say this is equator uh, this is equatorial orbit and this is the equator of earth so you can see here there is some inclination angle inclination between uh, the equator and the inclined orbit so if this inclination is there then that orbit is known as inclined orbit then uh, satellite uh, that the, the type of orbit by shape you can see here that this is circular orbit and this is elliptical orbit okay then by altitude if you have the altitude which is very low approximately 100 to 1200 miles then it is known as low earth orbit so low earth orbit satellites are very very close to earth then we have medium earth orbit medium earth orbit will be ranging from 3100 to 6200 miles okay and uh, these type of uh, satellites which are launched into medium earth orbit are known as medium earth orbit satellite uh, for example uh, you are using gps application so uh, that gps application is used uh, with the help of satellites which are launched in medium earth orbit then we have geostationary earth orbit that is geo okay so this is the farthest orbit that we can see uh, the distance uh, from the earth is approximately 36 thousands of kilometer so the satellites which are launched into geostationary earth orbit satellites are known as geostationary satellites now satellite uh, can also be divided uh, like active satellites and passive satellites so active satellites are used by linking and also the processing of signals where uh, uh, the linking is known as bent pipe technology which is processing like frequency translation power amplification etc which will be taking place active satellites employ regenerative technology which consists of demodulation processing frequency switching and power amplification are carried out uh, block used for this is called as a transponder so if a satellite okay uh, active satellite is a satellite where we have the transponders so all these process like you know frequency translation power amplification can be done on the transponder itself if you can see the satellite you can see like this structure right so this is actually the transponder and the purpose of transponder is to receive the signal then down convert the signal and then amplify the signal right so if this type of satellite is there then these satellites are known as active satellites whereas in passive satellites they do not use onboard processing and are just used to link to uh, space or to stations through space so uh, these satellites are kind of relay they just receive the signal and then further transmit the signal to other user they will not process that signal like process means they don't translate they don't amplify the signal they just receive the signal and transmit the signal and these passive satellites are low cost because there is not very circuitry which is involved in that and loss of power is associated and they are not used for communication purpose okay generally for communication maximum applications are covered with the help of active satellites large satellites are there which are weighing around uh, one thousandth of kg and medium satellites can weigh around 500 to thousands kg then uh, small satellites are there small satellites are of uh, mini satellites uh, weighing around uh, 100 to 500 kgs micro satellites can weigh around 10 to 100 kgs nano satellites can weigh around one to 
10 kg. So, CubeSats are the example of nano satellites. Pico satellites can weigh around less than 1 kg. So, these are the pico satellites, nano satellites, and micro satellites. See, mm, your uh, satellite communications is also evolving along with your mobile generation network okay so like i mean these are uh, these are the two technology which are evolving uh, uh, <coughs> simultaneously you can say you are going from second generation to third generation to fourth generation to five and then we are talking about sixth generation also Similarly, in satellite communication also, you can see like how it is transforming, right? So, basically, it is it is uh, creating um, the gap between satellite and the terrestrial communication lesser. Okay, uh, um, here you can see uh, this is the axis and this is the equator of Earth. Here you can see geostationary orbit, this is inclined orbit. Now, now we will discuss about uh, Leo, Mio and Geo type of orbits based on satellite height, orbital period, number of satellite, life, number of hands off uh, and then gateway and then propagation loss. So first if we talk about low earth orbit satellite, uh, the height of satellite can be ranging from um, 500 to 1500 kilometer. So the satellite height is actually the orbital height. Orbital height means the distance of satellite from the surface of earth. Uh, in medium earth orbit it can be uh, it can go around 5000 5, to 12000 km in geo it can go around 36000 km orbital period uh, can be 10 to 40 minutes 2 to 8 hours and 24 hours so here you can see that uh, in geo stationary earth orbit the orbital period is, is approximately equal to the orbital of uh, the earth now, number of satellites required here we have 40 to 80 satellites, 8 to 20 and 3. So, if we are reducing the satellite uh, orbit height, then the number of satellites required will be higher, right? Because distance come, distance is reducing and if we reduce the distance, so basically based on that distance, we need number of satellites to cover a particular region or entire coverage. Similarly, if we are increasing the distance of the orbit, then uh, only 3 satellites are required uh, for the for covering the complete world. So, here in geostationary earth orbit, only 3 satellites will be covering, covering the complete earth. Now, number of hands off. Okay, hand offs means, hand off means um, hmm, if you are moving from one point to another point, okay, and if you are communicating with one satellite, but okay, this application is, uh, is uh, providing you uh, that user is moving. So, I am moving from one point to another point. So, all my information data will be transferred to the satellite in which area I am moving, right? Right now, I am in this position and uh, maybe after a few minutes, I will be moving uh, into different location. So, all my information will be transferred to another satellite. So, that process is known as handoff. So, obviously, if your satellite is uh, distance is small, so number of satellites will be there right here you can see approximately 40 to 80 satellites are there okay so because of that number of handoff will be high it will be low in medium earth orbit and it will be kind of very less or you can say none in case of geostationary earth orbit gateway cost is very expensive expensive and cheap propagation loss is least high and highest in case of geo because of this distance it will be the highest Okay, so here you can see based on the different bands, we can have different sort of applications. So, we have VLFs, LF, I mean very low frequency, low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, then SHS, and then EF, EHF. Okay, now in satellite, we talk about the term, I mean this SHF band is used here, okay, which is specifically used for satellite or microwave communication okay so this shf is uh, used here which is l band s band c band x band k u band k band and k a band so generally we prefer to use c band k u band and k a band for satellite communication rest all bands will be used for other applications Okay, hmm. how does satellite work? This I have already covered uh, uplink and downlink. 
Now, uh, if we can see here, this is the satellite, this is Earth Station 1, this is Earth Station 2, okay, and this is how your signal is processing. So, as I told you earlier also that uh, we are using a transponder here, so your signal is transmitted to the satellite, it will be received by the receiving antenna and then it will be converted to a different frequency with the help of transponder, okay, right. And then it will amplify the signal and then further transmit the signal to other station. Why this uh, frequency translation is there? As I told you in C band, we are using 6 by 4 gigahertz. 6 is for uplink, 4 is for downlink, right? 6 is for uplink, 4 is for downlink. So, why we are using uh, 6 gigahertz band here and 4 here, 6 for uplink and 4 for downlink? high frequency band for uplink and low frequency band for downlink. So, the purpose of transponder is to receive the signal from earth station, changes the signal frequency, amplify the signal and transmit the signal to downlink. Okay. So, this high frequency band is allocated to this uplink and low frequency band is allocated to downlink. Okay. So, you can see here 6 is used, here 4 is used. So, you have to convert your signal from 6 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz okay so that purpose is solved with the help of this transponder it is helping us to convert the frequency from 6 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz okay so um, here we can see that uh, this is one way communication and this is two way communication one way communication is generally used for the broadcasting applications two way communication can be used for your normal uh, normal voice communication okay for that purpose we can use two way communication now this is the next topic which is uh, the satellite services so uh, there are so many uh, services that we can have with the help of satellite and uh, basically uh, this application falls in 12 services categories and which are designed by ITU, International Telecommunication Union. The major five uh, services are mentioned here. First is the fixed satellite services, which is known as FSS, broadcast satellite services, which is known as BSS, mobile sa satellite services known as MSS, and radio determination satellite service, RDSS, radio navigation satellite services, RNSS. Main, primarily important of this operation is uh, inter-satellite, services there is this is one another uh, important satellite services which is known as inter satellite services so fixed satellite services are there broadcast mobile radio and radio navigation uh, okay uh, fixed satellite services means we are using the services where our earth stations are fixed in nature broadcast satellite services involve the services in which we have uh, we have to broadcast something so we will discuss uh, the, uh, the services in detail in the coming slides so, let us talk about the fixed satellite services first. Uh, this is the oldest and mostly used satellite services which is intended for communication between the earth station okay, when these are fixed which are not moving. right? So, if your earth stations are fixed then you are using fixed satellite communication. Point to point communication is provided here. Uh, frequency allocation also specifies the direction of signal travel. Okay, assigning one frequency band for uplink, other for downlink. Basically, these services are intended for television, telephony and data signals. FSS services allocated bands are in C band, KU and KA band. So, any band can be used from these three categories. Next is broadcast satellite services, BSS. So, as I told you that uh, BSS is used for the broadcasting purpose. And what do you mean by broadcasting? Broadcasting means if you are transmitting single uh, message or single information to multiple users. So, source will be one, but destination will be many, right? In that case, and also in one way, it will be only in one direction. So, that is known as broadcast. Okay, so basically TV services and uh, high definition television sounds, these are the type of broadcast services. These services specify orbital start, frequency and channels. It also specify interference ratio, minimum power setup to the user. It also called direct broadcast services or direct to home satellite services. 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज द मोबाइल सेटेलाइट सर्विसेज सो डोंट कंफ्यूज दिस मोबाइल विद द हेल्प ऑफ योर मोबाइल डिवाइस दैट यू आर यूजिंग इट इज एक्चुअली मोबाइल मींस इफ योर एंड यूजर इज मूविंग इफ योर एंड यूजर इज नॉट स्टेशनरी देन द सर्विसेज व्हिच आर प्रोवाइड अंडर दिस कैटेगरीज आर नोन एज मोबाइल सेटेलाइट सर्विसेज और एमएसएस ओके सो बेसिकली मरी टाइम मोबाइल सर्विसेज are uh, nautical land mobile satellite services these are the different categories in which this service can be provided it primarily uh, involve telephonic calls sometimes carrying load uh, speed digital services facsimile etc highly compressed data can be transmitted through these services now basics of uh, uh, basic basically advantages of satellite there are few i mean you know so many applications or advantages of satellite the coverage is very high okay which can be beyond your imagination with the help of terrestrial communication if you compare terrestrial and satellites i mean the coverage is extremely high transmission cost of satellite is uh, independent to the distance from the center of the coverage area satellite to satellite communication is very precise high bandwidths are available for use basically few disadvantages are also there launching of satellite into orbit is very costly satellite bandwidth is gradually uh, becoming used up i mean uh, there are so many applications which are flooded and because of that uh, your uh, satellite frequency bands are basically going scarce so this is another uh, disadvantage which is there there is a larger propagation delay in satellite communication than in the terrestrial communication this is another disadvantage okay um satellite orbit we have al already covered leo mio and geo there is another special orbit which are involved which are you know is uh, special orbits molni orbit and hps these are the two uh, different orbits that i'll cover in the coming slides then we will talk about the frequency bands also okay these are the leo mio geo gso oh okay let's talk about first geostationary earth orbit which is known as geo okay as the name suggest geostationary geostationary means uh, something which is stationary with respect to earth right here we are talking about the satellite so that is why geostationary means the satellite which is looking or which you can see as a stationary okay if we are seeing the satellite at one uh, station so it seems to be stationary with respect to the earth so if your earth is moving like this the satellite will be like this so at one instant of time for one user at one instant of time at one point your satellite will be becoming stationary so um the orbital height is 35786 km above the earth surface along the equator orbits in geostationary orbit revolves uh, objects in geostationary orbit revolves around the earth at the same speed as the earth rotates this means the satellite uh, remains in the same position relative to the earth space so let's say if this is earth and this is the geostationary earth orbit okay so this distance is 3 5 7 8 km so this satellite will be will be looking as stationary with respect to earth because the time period of both is same which is of 24 hours right that is why this satellite is looking stationary now there are few advantages and disadvantages geo satellites distance from earth gives a large coverage area so coverage will be very high satellite have 24 hours view of a particular area the factors make it ideal uh, for broadcasting purpose okay so that is why these geo satellites are used for the broadcasting purpose there are few disadvantages which are involved with this because of the huge distance the first is i mean your signal will be comparatively weaker because you are transmitting signal from earth it is going up to 36000 km so that is why your signal will be weaker okay there would be time delay in the signal right which will be going around milliseconds 
okay which will be very bad for point to point communication geo satellite centered above the equator and have difficulty near to polar regions as this is parallel to the equator your orbit is parallel to the equator so because of that the coverage at the polar regions or north and south pole will be a difficult situation now moving on to the low earth orbit satellite low earth orbit satellites are the satellites which are launched into the orbit which is very close to earth uh, and the distance is going around 5 to 1500 kilometers okay they don't stay at a fixed position because the orbital period is different from earth okay okay so that is why they don't stay or they don't fix at one position uh, relative to the earth surface and are only visible for 15 to 20 minutes each pass the network of leo satellite is necessary for leo satellite to be used okay uh, there are few disadvantages uh, leo satellites proximity to earth compared to geo satellites gives it very better signal strength leo satellite is smaller area coverage less of waste of bandwidth approximately 500 kilometer height uh, there are few disadvantages network is needed i mean you have to network uh, the leo position and it has to compensate doppler effect atmospheric drag is also there with uh, leo satellite next is medium earth orbit satellite the distance is approximately 88000 to 18000 kilometer um, the meo satellites are similar to leo satellites it is it is visible for much longer period as compared to leo and larger coverage area as compared to leo basically it is it is a kind of uh, medium satellites between leo and geo uh, there are few advantages which are involved i mean basically meo satellites are used for gps okay uh, so fewer satellites are needed uh, in a mu network than a leo disadvantages uh, mu satellites distance give it a longer time delay as compared to leo and weaker signal as compared to leo but not as as bad as geo satellites so uh, this is all about today uh, the last topics will be covered in the next video thank you so much students for listening